Okay, hello everyone. Victor Momo from Excel Moments with a continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. This is challenge 297. And like I've said in previous videos, if you're not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. We're talking about pronic numbers in this challenge. First question for Victor. What are pronic numbers? I'll show you. It's right here on the screen. It says that pronic number is one which results from the product of two consecutive integers. An example is 506, which is the product of 22 and 23. A simpler one would be 6, you know, which stares me in the face, where you multiply 2 and 3 together. Those are two integers and they are consecutive. So our mandate is to look at all these numbers and just return the ones that are pronic numbers. We know the logic, right? That two consecutive integers should give us a number. But when you have a number here, like six, where there are so many, you know, <laughs> integers leading up to six, you know, which should you be looking out for? So the most important question is, what's the logic? What somebody may think about first of all is to look at six and look at all the pairs of consecutive integers. One and two, two and three, three and four, four and five, five and six. Multiply all of them together. If any of them results in six, you know, then six is a pronic number. That would work, but you will find out that you are doing more calculations than you need to. Let me use a number to describe the simple logic here. So let's use 20. We know what the answer should be here. This is four and five. Now, if you create a sequence from 1 to 20, you obviously know that when you even cross the square root, you are hardly, not that you are hardly, you are not going to find two integers that you multiply above the square root that would give you 20. Why? Very simple. Because the square root is the number that when multiplied by itself, right, you know, gives you 20. Okay? So if you take an integer above, like 5, 5 multiplied by itself is already 25. 5 multiplied by any other integer is more than 20. That's not going to work. If you take the integer just below this, that's 4. If you then say 4 by itself, that gives you 16. So obviously, 4 multiplied by anything below itself too would never give you anything up to 20. The only way this works is when you get the integer just below the square root. And of course, because it has to be consecutive, the integer just above the square root. When those two are multiplied and they give you the number, you have a pronic number. This is what I mean. Here I can do int of this. This gives me 4. Okay, so if 4 is correct, then you may say that there are two options. It's either I'm saying 4 and 3 or 4 and 5. Okay, but obviously, since 4 is less than the square root, the only way you can multiply 4 by a number would give you something like 20, you know, is to multiply it by a number larger than the square root, which obviously would be 5 or 4 plus 1. So our logic basically is simple. You know, get the square root of the number, get the integer lower than it, and obviously the integer above it. Once you multiply those two and they give you the number, then you have a pronic number. So let's go in here and just execute, you know, that simple logic. I'm only going to define a few variables because I want my formula to be a little elegant. So what I can do is just to start with a let, and I have a variable A, where A I want you to represent in this case, you know, pretty much just those numbers. Right? So that's A2 to A10. Then I want to have another variable that will just be the square root of those numbers and the int version of them, meaning that the integer just lower than the square root. I could call that B. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the int of, you could say square root of A. You could also do A raised to power 0 0.5. It's the same thing, right? Okay. So A raised to power half square root of A. So now let's just spill B out. So you see what this is. So all these numbers are the integers that are just lower than the square root of you know, the numbers that you have in here, okay? That's basically what that is. So now, since you've defined B as, you know, the integer just lower than the square root, obviously the next integer, which is the consecutive one, is B plus 1. So what it means here is that if you multiply B by B plus 1, it must give you back the number, which is what? A. So that's our logic. Our logic is that B times B plus 1 equals to A. So once we put a filter there, we can easily see the ones that meet that criteria. So rather than speeding out B now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a filter. And don't forget I'm filtering on these numbers, which I have defined as what? As A. So that's A. And my logic here is that B multiplied by what? B plus 1. Okay, so that's the integer just below the square root multiplied by the integer just above the square root should be equals to the number where the number itself is a. Okay. Someone else could say minus a equals to zero. That's up to you. <laughs> close the bracket here, close this, right? And you know, you have your answer. 
simple once you have you know your logic down that's basically you know what it is and you have the answer okay this next part is for those who are mathematically savvy you know this is something that diamond ellie showed i hope i pronounced that well but you you guys all know it the guy who knows everything about Excel, <laughs> you know. So it was something I talked about, but I didn't demonstrate, you know. But he used it and he also explained it. And I felt, oh, yeah, I mean, why not? Why not show this? But if you're not mathematically savvy, you know, you can stop watching at this point. But I know you wouldn't. So please, you know, come with us. It's simple, really. And the logic here is that, yes, you have an integer, which for all intents and purposes could be X. X always seems to be what we are looking for, right? You know, X multiplied by X plus 1. This is like saying the integer and 1. The one after it, right? So x multiplied by x plus 1 must give us the number we are looking for, n. If you kind of write this out as a quadratic equation, you can see that x squared, you know, plus x minus n gives you 0. That's basically what it is. And this is a quadratic equation, right? Yeah, you can see the coefficient. You know, your a normally is the coefficient of x squared, which is 1. You know, your b is the coefficient of x. That's the number before x, which is also 1. And your C in this case would just be minus N, which is like minus the number you're looking for. Now, don't forget, when you have a quadratic equation, you can solve it using, you know, the general formula. Back in my high school days, we call it almighty formula. But what is general formula? Which is the minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4. You can, you know, derive it using completing the square, but that's me going, you know, very mathematical. But the point is that in there, you have a square root, you know, of B squared you know, minus 4 is in the expression there, okay? So now, the only way you can, after solving this, get an integer result, because we are looking for an integer, is if this number in here, b squared minus 4 is, is a perfect square. Why? Because if this number in here is not a perfect square, what I mean by perfect square, that's a number that has an integer square root, for example, 25. You know, square root of 25 is 5, so we have an integer. If the number in there is 20, square root of 20 is 4.47, which whatever mathematical, you know, operations you perform there, you wouldn't get an integer. So it means that b squared minus 4ac must be a perfect square, okay? So now, what is b squared? b squared would be 1, you know, minus 4ac. By the time you do that, it eventually turns out to be 1 plus 4 times the number. That's the expression you get. That's b squared minus 4ac. Minus minus gives you plus. So what it means is that, you know, if you take the square root of this number, right, if that number is pronic, it means if you take the square root of this number, it should be the same as when you take the square root and you use an int in front of it. Let me explain what that means simply. If you have a number 20 here, right, and you take the square root of 20, okay, what happens? You have an int, you have a decimal. If you take the integer, you know, of this number, right, they won't be the same. But if this number is a perfect square like 25, you can see they are the same. 36, you see they are the same. 49, you see they are the same. Okay, so basically that's the logic. So the logic is to look at 4 times the number plus 1. Take the square root, okay? Is the square root of that number the same as if you take the int of that? If that is, then, you know, you have a pronic number. So let me see if I can implement that one here. Okay, so basically, I can start with the same thing and I can do, you know, a let, I say let A be, you know, these numbers, okay, right? And then maybe I take another, you know, variable, maybe I call that P, and I use P now to represent this 4 times norm plus 1, but I can put the square root, you know, um, in there. So what I can do is 4 times the number, you know, which is A, you know, plus 1, you know, and I raise that to the power of what, 0 0.5. So that's that number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if this is the same as int of it. Okay. So this is like the square root of the number. So if this whole number is the same as when I take the integer of this, you know, then I have a perfect square and I have a pronic number. Okay. So now I will just go into my filter. So it means I'm filtering on A where what, you know, P is the same as int of P. That's what this will mean. Yeah, let's see if that's correct. Yeah, and it also works. So, yeah, this one is really just, if you remember your high school maths, you know, then you know that, well, this is really for those who are, you know, like I said, mathematically savvy. But I like it because, well, I'm an engineer and I love mathematics. And so this is an interesting one. But anyway, uh, you can stick with the first one. This is just to also show 
a little spice so that's how you get it so i would have another video where i'll just more or less replicate this you know iconically you know which should be an easy one so if you like this video please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out